everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I'm so excited today. We have a very special interview. I am here talking to the uh, host, actress, voice actress, and Christmas movie fan. This is so exciting. We're talking <laughs> to Chris Carr today. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. So what we like to do when we first start our interviews is we like to give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you developed the career that you have. Okay. Well, I'm Chris Carr and I've been in LA for gosh, about seven years. And basically I started out uh, doing community theater back in Texas and voiceover. I had no intention of being an actor. Uh, I even auditioned for colleges and I didn't get into enough. So I went, oh, I should never be an actor. If I can't get into, you know, 15 out of the colleges I want to get into, then I'm not going to be an actor. Um, mm -hmm. And I worked for a local paper in Houston. And when I got laid off, I happened to go to an audition that night for uh, the Alley Theater, which is one of our uh, nice theaters in Houston. And I had a little bit of liquid courage in me. <laughs> and I, I did my audition. And ever since, uh, acting has been a much more lucrative field for me than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. I fell into voiceover in a kind of similar way where I met Stephen Foster, who's an amazing ADR director. Mm -hmm. And he just said, Hey, uh, I like you. You want to come in and audition for me? And then I did about 15 different anime with him. Uh, and so from there, it's just been trying to do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Uh, it's one of my, my favorite lessons I learned from my teacher, David H. Lawrence, the 16th. Uh, he was the puppet master on Heroes. He's amazing. Oh um, gosh. But he, he, he said that one day in a, in a voiceover class, and I was like, oh, that's so stupid and makes so much sense. That's the most basic <laughs> advice you could ever give anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and so ever since I've been following that, and that's what led me to hosting for Nerdwire and doing podcasts and eventually working on the John Campia show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I never thought that I would make a, a living out of my personality because I'm a, as a girl from Texas, I'm a, I'm a little much. You know, uh, yeah, I'm a lot to handle. So it's, it's really nice that I've, I've kind of made a career out of telling jokes and just giving my opinion. Yeah. And it's, it's so nice to connect to people like that. That's so cool. I really admire that. And you, I, animation is my first love, uh, even more than Hallmark movies. And so I, 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 yeah, you've done so many anime characters over the years. And mm -hmm. I was just wondering, uh, did you, were you a fan of anime or did that kind of grow as you did the parts or, uh, how did, how did you end up in that world? I've always been a fan. I'm a yeah. huge Sailor Moon fan girl. Oh my gosh. Ah. Like Rachel, if you could see my office, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, it looks like I have a small Japanese child. I don't, it's just me. Um, <laughs> there's just manga and Funkos and things everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I always loved that, and I really loved Cowboy Bebop. And Stephen uh -huh. J. Bloom was just one of those voice actors that I really resonated with. And he got his start at uh, Funimation, which is based out of Dallas. Yeah. And so there was always kind of this in the back of my head thing of, I, I, you know, I live near that. I could maybe do that. But doing the anime stuff really made me have such a deeper appreciation, especially because... English dubs kind of get, you know, they get looked down on sometimes and people mm -hmm. will roll their eyes and say, oh no, I only like to listen yeah. to the subs. Like it makes you cooler that you're yeah. better at. <laughs> um, but it's really hard. It is so hard to do ADR and it makes me appreciate those anime so much more. And now I just, you know, I devour anime. I just watched Cannon Busters the other day, which is so good and everyone should check mm -hmm. out. Mm. Um, my friend Rachel always has anime uh, girl nights and so she'll introduce everyone to a new anime that she really, really likes. I've always been a huge fan, but mostly it was, it was the, the glorious voice of Stephen J. Bloom that really, really hit all of that home for me and made me want to watch more of it and be part of it. Well, I'm officially jealous of your life. I would do <laughs> anything to have anime girl nights with friends. It's so fun. Uh, Girl, you should come. Just go to Burbank. Uh, yeah, next time. I'll call, <laughs> I'll call you. Because that sounds so fun. I'm always trying to push anime on my friends because I really, like, I really legitimately don't understand people that don't like it. Like, 
I, it's kind of to me it's similar to people who don't like black and white movies that doesn't make any sense to me like i yeah. understand not liking particular movies or even particular franchises but it's just a medium to tell a story like, exactly I, it doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> it's something we talk about a lot on john campia's show is that the medium doesn't determine the quality of the art it's just a vessel for it yeah which is always so funny to me, though, just because John just anime does not do it for him. And, you know, I've pitched him a couple shows to watch. Viewers have pitched him shows to watch. It's just not his thing. Yeah. But I mean, that, that's also I'm not somebody who's ever really jived with the horror genre. And so I understand that everything come to, yeah. comes down to personal taste. But anime spans so many different genres. That's what I'm saying, because like horror is a particular that is a genre anime is just a medium for telling the story there's exactly. horror in anime there's comedy in anime there's there's every kind of genre exactly so, that's, and also i feel like the style can be quite different I mean, oh absolutely you know, you've got something like uh I don't know, like something like um, a Makoto Shinkai movie versus a Miyazaki movie versus like uh, to me those were versus like Asayas Hakata, like these different styles, mm -hmm. I think are quite different. Like one's way more watercolory, one's way more it, it uses a lot more digital uh, artistry, and I don't know. It just seems like they're they think that's all the big eyes. And, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <it's not. laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm a huge fan of your name. So I'm so excited. Oh, so good. The new movie, his new movie, Makoto Shinkai's new movie. Yeah. Oh, I so wish I could see it uh, because it's not going to be in, U in Utah probably for probably until next April, mm -hmm. March. So I've, I've been trying to send out good vibes to G Kids. Like, <laughs> I'll review your movie. I promise. Right? I'll, I'll <laughs> but I'm, I'm, because I, I love your name. I think that movie is, it's my oh, favorite. It's so good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. That's a really great gateway one, too, for people. Yeah. If you have any kind of qualms about anime, that's a great one to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or Erased. Erased is a great series to get people into, into anime. Yeah. I'm, I am not as up on the series cause just because I'm not, I'm more of a movie person than a TV person, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm working at it. There's so many. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, it's nice, but I do love Sailor Moon. It yeah. was, it was really cool at, um, uh, at Fan X here in, in Utah. Like last week, uh, Linda Ballantyne was there. So I got to it was the voice of Sailor Moon. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> for that one. Anyway, so I was, I was very excited about that. And uh, yeah, it must, I'm, I think it's really cool because you just have done so many different things. And not many people, I feel like, get to have such diversity in their career like you've had. Yeah. Uh, with hosting and like the voice acting that we've talked about. Yeah all the different things that you've done and that's got to be kind of overwhelming a little bit but also exciting <laughs> it is it's it's a lot of different hats to wear and yeah the, it's it definitely feels like you're spinning plates some week um just because you know i'll i'll go host for two shows i'll go do a live show and then i'll go do one of my nerdwire things mm -hmm. and then i'll be off to do a commercial audition or a theatrical audition yeah and then i've got to run back home to my sound booth and do a couple bank commercials that i've uh booked or i've got a audition for a new video game mm -hmm. and it's it's all the same kind of job right but it all takes different acting muscles if you will mm -hmm. Like, and voiceover, I always think is honestly the most challenging one. And it, there, there's a reason why sometimes you just sound so different on voiceover because you don't mm -hmm. have the, the physical body to look at, right? That you kind of start filling in your own assumptions about how that mm -hmm. person now looks or whatever. If you saw me in the booth, you'd think I was just having a seizure. Uh, I, do, you, do you have a home booth or do you have I a do. Oh, I have a home cool. booth. I'm in it right now, actually. Um, oh. And my dogs are in it with me. They like to come in here. Because I know um, some people have the claw. They set up their closets. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we did. We we took yeah. our one of our walk-in closets and we just kind of took out all of the shelving and we installed all of the foam padding and I've got nice. extra boards everywhere. I've got weird little uh, lights that I have up. Um, so it's nice. It's cute. Yeah. It's it's very inconvenient though because it's off my guest room. So, you know, <laughs> holidays when my parents stay with me, I'm like, all right, get out, get out of here. Unless you want to hear me yell and be a cannibal for the next 15 <laughs> minutes. Like, 
you guys yeah. got to go. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. I, when, it, when you're coming up with a voice, like, do you sort of have a process for, uh, do you listen to the original Japanese uh, for anime, f the original Japanese voices first, or mm -hmm. how do you kind of get that voice? You do. You hear that because you also, you with ADR, all the choices have been made for you already. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the animation's already there. Somebody's already done the voice before you. So there is a little bit of... Um, inflection and pacing that you have to take from that person. Um, as far as the actual tone goes, a lot of times I derive that from the physicality of the character. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in an anime called Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I play Margot, who is a demon witch and German, which was a very upsetting day for me in the booth because I, you know, you just get in there and it's, oh, hey, you're going to play this character. Also, you're going to speak Japanese and German. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I went to public school. I'm not great at that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, right. Uh, but it was, you know, this very busty blonde Valkyrie. And I just decided it'd be really funny if she had the most high pitched voice ever. And so all of her lines just slowly morphed in her being yeah. like, yep, okay, we're way up here. Where is this house? She's going to talk the whole time. Oh and uh, other times it'll be, okay, that character looks like me and is very subdued. I'm going to use more of my lower register and sound more like myself as her. You kind of play around with yeah. it. And obviously your, your ADR director, your director is the final say on everything. And there were days where Stephen would go, yeah, we're not doing that voice. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm really bad at dialects. So every now and then uh, I've had people, like when I did uh, this video game out here, why don't, why don't you try doing uh, a high British dialect? And my husband's actually a, an English voice uh, dialect coach, so mm -hmm. I should be good at it, but right. I'm, I'm just the worst. And so I did that for about 10 minutes, and they went, you know, Chris, we'll just uh, we'll change that voice. She should be American. Uh, good try, though. Good effort. I was like, oh, man, I'm really bad at that, I guess. I should really work on it. I guess you, just, you know your spots. You know yeah. your lane. Exactly. That's, that's I, I, I know what the strengths are, and I definitely know the weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so how did you get started in the, in Nerdwire on your right channel and uh, doing that content? Oh man, I, my entire career basically has been accidental. Really mm -hmm. everything comes down to, I ran into somebody by circumstance. I happened to be nice to that person and then they offered me a job. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything in life is always talent meets opportunity, right? And this is why it's so important to just be kind to everyone because mm -hmm. one, you never know what anyone's going through. And two, you never know who's going to be the next person to help you out. Right. And so uh, my, my good friend, Scott O'Neill, who does a wonderful, wonderful video game stream, uh, Nook and Cranny, he happened to be an editor at the time for Obzev Entertainment. And he said, hey, you know, we've only got this one host right now and they're looking for more people. And they really want people with comedy and writing backgrounds. And I'd been doing stand-up for a couple of years at that time. And, and you know, just mostly doing voiceover and, and commercial gigs when I could. So he said, you should just come in and, and audition for it. I went, oh, okay. And they had me write this little goofy piece on Attack on Titan. Uh, or no, I wrote it on One Punch Man. Mm -hmm. And I, I never thought it would see the light of day. So it is so, so cheeky and nonsensical. And then they decided to use the piece, which, oh God, what a terrible way to be introduced to the internet and to anime fans. Um, Cause it was, you, you know how the internet yeah. can be. Sometimes sure. they're just so delightful. So it was just, <laughs> oh, this girl is cringe. She's giving me cringe cancer. Uh, but despite those comments, they hired me on the spot. Mm -hmm. And so um, I fell into that and then started working, you know, very closely with Whitney Van Lanningham, who's my co-host mm -hmm. over there. And we've really lucked out because one of the things that makes that channel work is that essentially we're just professional best friends. Mm -hmm. um, we, I mean, we met, gosh, only about two years ago. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that's been greatest over there is that in any of our videos or our lives that we get to do together, you, you get to feel like you're, you're part of our friend group and that you're just kicking it with us. And we're all, you know, at happy hour, mm -hmm. having a good time talking about nerdy stuff. Um, but really, it was just because of Scott saying, hey, you should do this, <laughs> and me listening to him, uh, that I even got hired in the first place. That's so cool. I relate to so many things about what you just said, because it, it, all the co-hosts here at Hallmarkies, I, I think mm -hmm. people think that we have worked together 
for a lot longer than we have we've known especially my main co-host amber yeah. uh people think that we know each other for a, a long time but really uh it's only been a you know a couple of years which i guess when you have that chemistry mm -hmm. you just have that chemistry and it feels that way yeah absolutely so, yeah and i so you guys cover uh avatar a lot on the yeah. last Bender, uh, airbender uh avatar and um cv universe a lot Mm -hmm. And uh, so are those, was that uh, audience driven or you personally dri driven? So. It was a little bit of both, honestly. Um, Avatar is something that I am a massive fan of. Yeah. So it, it was kind of a, a convenience thing with our producer, Brett, uh, who just said, well, you've seen a lot of Avatar. We'll have you be our point person on that. Mm -hmm. uh, because with, with the Netflix show uh, being made, the live action one, yeah. uh, that SEO really started tracking. And that's a lot of times how we do decide what our stories are going to be is, you know, mm -hmm. what are, what's everyone talking about on the internet? What's coming out? What new shows do we think people are going to be into? And so with Avatar, it was just, okay, talk, say everything you've ever thought about Avatar, basically. And it would be me and Brett just sitting in our writer's room saying, okay, well, what if we do a piece on this? Okay, what if we do a piece on that? Uh, I'm still hoping, he went and got the, the Korra Pro Bending uh, tabletop game. Mm -hmm. And I, all I want to do is a video of us playing that because <laughs> it seems so fun. And the, the most fun we had, honestly, was when we did that really silly video on the Korra video game. Mm -hmm. um, we had a blast doing that kind of stuff. And it allowed me to learn things about one of my favorite fandoms that I didn't know about before. I had no idea there was a video game. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't read a lot of the Korra comic books after the series had ended. So a lot of the things that we ended up doing were a mix of, yeah, people want more, but also I want to learn more as a fan. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven Universe, my husband is actually a massive fan of. I didn't get into it until later. And so uh, I think Brett and Logan were actually talking one day about how much Logan loves Steven Universe. And, he was, and Brett was just like, yeah, well, Chris is going to learn to love it. She's going to watch it for the next three months. <laughs> and, uh, and I did fall in love with it. And it's a wonderful mm -hmm. show. The movie was yeah. so good. I'm, I'm so glad yeah. that the, the movie's allowing us to do new videos and explore the show all over again, which is so fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, that was one, though, that I, I had seen a couple episodes. And then the show gave me the opportunity to really fall in love with it. Which is nice because because sometimes you get an assignment that's amazing. Like uh, for my birthday, we got Netflix screeners of Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance. That was an amazing assignment. And there are Still other times. I've seen it. I've just been oh, too busy. I know. Oh, gosh, uh, you need to check it out. You will love it. You'll absolutely love it. Um, and then you know there are other times where there's shows that don't really jive with me. But then there's other shows like Devil Man Cry Baby that aren't really my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know you gotta you gotta watch through. 18 episodes of that and go, okay, well, let's see if I can find something that, that I like. And, yeah. and that's, you know, that's always the challenge, isn't it? Is just bringing your opinion into something without really isolating anyone else who's a fan. And right. you guys have to do that all the time with going through these different movies is how yeah. can I talk about this and not completely yuck somebody's yum? Yeah, it's, it is true. It can be challenged. Uh, last year for the, the Hallmark shows, I was not a fan of the season of Chesapeake Shores. I really, really just yeah. liked the choices they made, but I had to, it's, I had to, you have to figure out that line between being honest and authentic exactly, and not being mean or, uh, or, you know, it, or just keeping that tone like silly enough that it's yeah. that that it's enjoyable to listen to, and I feel like we succeeded. Uh, mm -hmm. in my, and I haven't had to cover it this year, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, some of the other co-hosts were able to, were willing to cover it, but uh, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely uh, it, it is an interesting thing as a content creator. You have to cover stuff that you don't necessarily even like that much because it's in yeah. your brand, but you have to, yeah, you have to find that line because nobody likes a phony exactly. and, and you can totally tell if somebody's being inauthentic mm -hmm. uh, and, but you know, nobody, people are turning into your brand for a reason. So it's a, it's an interesting dynamic that you have to, 
to have to Absolutely. tread. Absolutely. And there's that pressure too of, well, how do I make this clickable? And mm -hmm. a lot of time the pressure is then to, to do a takedown or make it so, you right. know, why this is the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually uh, as a human being, you don't feel that strongly about a movie of this yeah. movie ruined my life. Eh, it probably didn't probably didn't but man is that a clickable title yeah i that's why I, I i do think that the the rant is a valid response mm -hmm. it is valid but you have to use it very 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 selectively Absolutely. i rate this is random but i actually the i haven't done one on my channel well i actually really disliked the the droid l3 in the solo movie uh -huh. I, I thought she was the worst character. And so I did a, I did a video, it's probably my most clickbaity video over on my other channel uh, and why I think L3 was the worst character in the history of Star Wars. But I, I backed it up <laughs> and, I, and I don't do videos like that very often. So like, I, I feel like people know, okay, she really means it. She really dislikes yeah. this. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I kind of joke on the Hallmarkers podcast that a movie, uh, so I'll say, this movie took me to a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> it was not my favorite. I like uh, that. That's, I'm going to yeah. steal that. Yeah, please do. <laughs> I usually say that things make me feel bad in my tummy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that, mm, this movie gave me indigestion. Yeah. It's going to a dark place, um, <laughs> but but yeah. Speaking of, <laughs> of uh, movies, so the reason why I invited you on is so I was watching your coverage on John Campia's show, which mm -hmm. I personally you should tell him love the fact that he has such strong female voices on his channel. That's oh, awesome. thank you. Gosh, yeah, yeah Aaron Cummings Aaron. is the coolest. Yeah. She That's, is so awesome. I just, oh, I've got such a girl yeah. crush on her. She's oh, yeah. incredible. Really good. Really good. Uh, and, and, and they're not just, you're not just hosts. Like you're really sharing your opinion. Like, yeah. And I think it's great. Uh, but, uh, yeah. but him and uh, Robert were not high on the last Christmas trailer. No. And, and you were like, oh, I think it looks fun. <laughs> I like Hallmark Christmas movies and I uh, and cheesy Christmas movies. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to have her on the podcast. This is so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> I'm so pumped about it. Yeah, I yeah. love Christmas movies and we have to, I'm, I'm trying to get better. Um, luckily, because of Nerdwire, I get to start watching Christmas movies, usually yeah. in September, right. uh, just so we have our coverage out of the way. And mm -hmm. each time it's like, oh no, I'm so upset I have to do this. Makes Coco. Gosh, it's too early. Hangs up tree. Um, and so I, I'm trying to like ease into my joy of Christmas because if it was up to me, my tree would be up already and I would have, you know, my miniature skating rinks out and everything. I've got the whole Dickens Village set. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. bananas in this house. So Anytime yeah. I have the opportunity to watch Christmas movies, I am in and talking about them. Heck yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and we are getting started very early this year with Hallmark because, and Lifetime, both of them have their Christmas movies starting, starting before Halloween, mm -hmm. their official Christmases, Christmas movies. So uh, we're, we're very excited about it. Uh, we have a just between Hallmark and Lifetime new Christmas movies, not even the rebroadcasts. Uh, there are going to be uh, 68 new movies just in those two channels alone, which yes. is, it's pretty great. <laughs> and, That's amazing. Yeah. And the thing about when you watch all, when you watch all of them, I guess I'm just kind of a completionist, but people are, people always think, oh, isn't that just boring? Watch. And I'm like, I don't know. I love it because you, you start to realize, okay, what, what is going right here? What's going wrong here? When you see, it's kind of like when you're on my blog, I did a uh, Scrooge month and I watched 35 different versions of Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And you start to sort of see when you, it's kind of like, if you gave 35 people a writing prompt, it's the same writing prompt, but you, but you read all of them and they're all very, very different. And to exactly. me, that's, that's really interesting. I like that. 
I agree. I love seeing how people follow the formula mm -hmm. because just yes. because you have all the same ingredients doesn't mean that's going to be the same recipe. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out very different. You know, mm -hmm. one of my favorite interpretations of a Christmas carol, which is done so many times. I'm, yeah. I'm a big Muppet Christmas carol girl. Mm -hmm. I love that version. I think it's that's so great. Good. But then you go and watch something like Scrooge, which is completely different mm -hmm. and still following those same formulaic moments, mm -hmm. but it delivers a completely different product. Yeah. It's so fun to compare and contrast them. Yeah, it really is. And we have so much fun on the podcast. And, and uh, I must say, I was a little bit disappointed by the second trailer to Last mm -hmm. Christmas that they put out. The first one I was super hyped about. I thought it looked really funny. Yeah. And then the second one looked not as funny. So I was a little bit, and it's all about her. It, she's lost her voice and she's not singing anymore. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on excited. that. I'm excited. No, I just want this kind of, I wanted her to just kind of be a trash person, yeah. you know? I'm, and, and I think that's okay. Yeah. I think that's and fine. I, I really wanted him to be like an, and he might still be an angel. It was looking like, oh, he's going to be an angel because uh -huh. he was oh, almost always wearing the same outfit and like, oh, that would be so bonkers and so fun <laughs> if he was like some, some angel come down to like, <laughs> to help the crabby Christmas store lady. Yeah. So if it's about her getting her voice to be the great singer, that's less interesting to me. I'm with you. <laughs> I just wanted it to be kind of a curmudgeon -y girl because I, I really get sick of the manic pixie dream girl trope Yeah. Of, of like, oh, she used to be so wonderful, but then everything changed when this happened mm -hmm. and now she's just lost her spark. But can this man help her get it back? I bet we'll find out in the third act. Like, right. And but that, it's usually the revert. It's usually though, it's the, it's the girl who is like quirky and unique exactly. and she's going to, she's going to get their curmudgeonly guy to yeah. like see the world is a great place and, and it's just exactly <sighs> she wears tights and butterfly clips he wears suits yeah. and ties will these two wacky kids ever figure it out <laughs> yeah, right. and occasionally like any formula and any trope it can be done well yeah but uh but usually it's really grown inducing to me uh, it's mm -hmm. just it's like we're not as ladies we're not here to 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 just boost the spirit of men like that's exactly. i don't know it's just lame yeah. i don't like it yeah i like when characters regardless of their sex have agency it's pretty yes. cool <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you know hallmark movies it's interesting because they get a lot of flack for for uh being you know these squeaky clean uh movies but in certain ways i don't think that they get quite the credit that they deserve the fact that all of their movies are female centric Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with characters who for the most part are, are the focus of the story and they make their, you know, they make their own choices and yeah, sure. They fall in love, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, yeah. Try to get people to fall in love with Christmas. Like what's mm -hmm. wrong with that? <laughs> and exactly. they're cheesy, but, uh, they're, there's, they're done in a way that is very uh sweet and uh and but i don't i i think this the characters can actually be more sort of i hate the ones that just give up everything for a guy i hate that yeah but for the most part i think the characters are actually more self-determined and more uh motivated than maybe giving credit for absolutely it's usually yeah. somebody who's on a mission to mm -hmm. to save something or, yes. or better a town or do something like that mm -hmm. and you know to the, the the cheesy note i mean the world has taken such a turn yeah it's so <laughs> nice right. to watch things that that the crux of the movie is hope yeah. you know and i'm sure that right. sounds incredibly cheesy to people but it's so refreshing when you watch something that's just about feeling hopeful and mm -hmm. having you know some kind of faith in anything yeah. and just you know believing your town can rally believing that you can save your business believing that you can restore mm -hmm. this like kids christmas it's a really refreshing thing mm -hmm. to see especially in an age where we love the dark and gritty films mm -hmm. we love all the to too hard to watches you know mm -hmm. uh it's it's just Sometimes you need a palate cleanser. Sometimes yeah. I want a sorbet and that sorbet is a Hallmark movie. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and also like love is part of life. 
you yeah. know i mean most people if you sit down and say tell me your story they have the basic elements of a rom-com in their romance they usually have a meet cute of some kind mm -hmm. they have conflict you know conflict that keeps them apart they then they reconcile then they get married you know like they have yeah. all of those elements of a romantic comedy and if you were to just see it, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty cheesy. Yeah, romance yeah. is cheesy. That's part of life. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, 100%. If I, if I took pen to paper and wrote down, you know, my story, yeah. it'd sound like a Lifetime movie. Yeah. It'd be, you know, it'd be the well, best case scenario of stalking. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, the Lifetime movies, are, we call them the cautionary tales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine ended more Hallmark, but the lead up, I was like, this could take a turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of joke that there's uh there's in almost any hallmark movie there's a hallmark or horror moment where the movie could, <laughs> if you screenshot it it would easily be a horror movie yes right there the, oh, i uh, love that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so it's uh it's funny did you have like favorite uh christmas movies that you would watch every year for uh uh for growing up the or even now that are traditions you got to watch these christmas movies oh absolutely i cycle through everything mm -hmm. um i growing up again muppet christmas carol was yeah. a huge one my poor little brother was so scared of the ghost of christmas yet to come and as a me and big sister i definitely made him watch that all the time uh because that's what you gotta do to your siblings right terrify them uh right. <laughs> but that one was in the rotation i loved charlie brown christmas i had mm. we have a, a vhs of all of the uh that makes me sound so old. We have a VHS of all the taped CBS specials. Uh -huh. um, and so it's got Garfield Christmas and uh, the Claymation Christmas, which is mm -hmm. so good and so underrated. I don't think enough people know the about Claymation it. Claymation Christmas, huh? Claymation Christmas. It's so wonderful. It's just a variety show, basically, with these two dinosaurs trying to uh, search for the meaning of Christmas while they're putting on a variety yes. act. It's so cute. I got to see um, that. I haven't seen, oh, I haven't seen that. That's saying a lot because I've seen everything. I feel like it's I've seen everything. It's so cute. It's just like a series of music videos with Claymation. It's perfect. That's um, you can totally find it on YouTube. I'll send you a link. Yeah, um, do. It's so good. Um, I really, I've watched, well, now I watch all the Harry Potter movies because those just feel mm -hmm. like Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love to, my, my friend Holly Constant and I, we, we yell at each other constantly. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. Uh, just Get a to, jumper. Yeah. <laughs> Big old R on it yeah <laughs> uh, i'm a ginger again so i need to get one of those sweaters now yeah. uh, uh but you yeah, know one kind of, of a constant rotation of things one of my favorite because i love i love all of those but one of my favorite is uh is actually christmas uh, it's on sesame street christmas <gasps> Eve on yes sesame street. it's so good you have bert and ernie uh doing the gift of the magi mm -hmm. like a little story <laughs> so good and then they end it singing uh have yourself a merry little christmas my favorite christmas song oh so good it's so good and then big bird is all uh, oscar convinces him that there's uh santa can't fit down the chimney so there's gonna be no <laughs> christmas it's very upsetting that's great oh. and uh yeah it's it's really that one's one of my favorites that's uh, cute did yeah. you watch the the muppet and fraggle one growing up too yeah that one's oh, good yeah that's a cute one that i think that's um, a muppet family christmas i think is yeah what it's called. yeah because that one has not only it has the sesame street characters and mm -hmm. the muppets and muppet babies yeah and fraggle rock all together it's it's intense it's, it's amazing epic. <laughs> Really I'm a fan of it. I love that you bring up have yourself a little merry have yourself a merry Christmas, because um, I think people don't understand what a what a originally dark and haunting song that was yeah. from Meet Me in St. Louis. Um, mm -hmm. uh, family Stone does a great job of bringing that up and showing how like it's a song about bringing family together and and that's what you need through the holidays and reminding yeah. the, us of the core values of Christmas. Ah. Um, uh, that's yeah. that's a real good song. Have you ever seen uh the like the old the old ones like uh have you ever seen Christmas in Connecticut? Yeah. Isn't that one so good? That one's so good. I love <laughs> it's a wonderful life. Um yeah. oh gosh. Such yeah, Miracle good. on 34th Street, mm -hmm. Holiday Affair is fun. Mm -hmm. Uh there's just a a bunch of I kind of feel like Holiday Affair and Christmas in Connecticut are the uh uh, the ancestors, the forebearers of Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, absolutely. I can totally see that. Especially anytime there's like a fake, 
because uh, Christmas Connecticut, you know, she's like pretending to be engaged and pretending mm-hmm. to be this housewife and pretending. Yeah. And uh, I, and whenever you can get that dynamic in a Hallmark movie, it almost always scores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I I love. It's one of my favorite tropes. Is yeah. the the fake fiance? Oh, yes. so yeah. good. Yeah, I, I can't ever think of a single situation where that would actually happen, but I love it. It's hilarious. <laughs> like, hi, mom and dad. Here's my fake. <laughs> yeah. Here's my fiance <laughs> that I've never talked about before, but here you go. It's so hard to see how it would work now, too, because of social media. Yeah, that's true. Like, how would you bring in this fake dude? Everyone posts what they ate for breakfast. Of course, you would have pictures of the guy you'd been yeah, seeing. That's true. That's that yeah. Hallmark tackle that next for me. Show me <laughs> a modern day fake fiance that you, I don't know, catfished parents. Yeah. Or maybe you should, you're just forced to set it in the 90s. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. The big, the big thing, I do wish that Hallmark would do a little bit more whimsy than they are currently doing. They're mm-hmm. they kind of, last year especially, they were kind of in the uh, workplace comedy slash party planning yeah mode which is fine and i enjoy it, but it's nice to have santa appear occasionally every mm-hmm. now and then <laughs> yeah it's christmas i can suspend my disbelief <laughs> i mean my favorite my two favorites last year were actually on lifetime shockingly mm-hmm. enough because i love christmas perfection which uh was kind of a groundhog day kind of mm-hmm. uh thing with the girl waking up every day and she's in this uh perfect Ir- irish christmas village uh-huh. And it was, I thought, very funny, very hilarious. When uh, whenever she tries to swear in perfect Christmas land, it comes out as uh, as Christmas words. Like she'll be, she'll be like frosted fruit cake. <laughs> she <can't. laughs> She's like you oh, stocking cute. stuffer, which I thought was so funny. I was dying. And uh, but that one was really good. And then I also really liked one called Christmas Pen Pals yes okay i saw that one. Oh, you did wasn't it great yes that was, was so, so cute <laughs> and i think they should just keep doing one every year because you could have just uh, you could have i love this idea of a whole town doing pen pals pen pals for christmas it's the yeah. cutest idea ever you could just keep doing them and have different people i think people. it's so sweet yeah it was i so really liked that good. one i really liked the cast of that one yeah. too everyone was great mm-hmm I get excited anytime I see Michael Gross in something because I just oh adore gosh. him. So good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's he was TV great. dad. I loved, yeah, all the, re- all the little pen pal relationships were so good. Yeah. Oh. And then the ending was so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you gave the, you gave it to Daniel and I was just, I loved, I had never seen that Sarah Drew, D- Drew, I think it is Sarah Drew. Anyway, I, I had never yeah. seen her before because I don't watch Grey's Anatomy anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought she was the best. She did great. Mm-hmm. She was really, really wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have any other uh, Hallmark movies that, uh, that you particularly like or tropes yeah. that you particularly like? Last year, I ended up watching so many of the Netflix ones, Mm -hmm. um, which a lot of them originally were Hallmark movies, I believe. And then they made the transition over there. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I love like a bad Christmas movie too, you know, Mm -hmm. like that that, uh, Christmas princess switch or whatever that one was with (laughs) Vanessa Hudgens. I was all about. I loved that. That I loved the advent calendar. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially I liked the guy in that. I'd never seen him before. Yes, he was, he was great. Mm-hmm. He was so great. And I love that the um the kind of crummy love interest in Advent Calendar, mm-hmm. all she had to do was be like, Yeah, we don't work out. And he's like, Yeah, yeah. we don't. Good. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. That's oh, true. Only. The the bad men of business in these movies can be so fun. I love, yeah. I love that. they can like, be so over the top yeah. and sinister. And this one just they they didn't mesh well and it was yeah we shouldn't date all right cool well have a great night all right bye yeah, yeah. and that was so oh, refreshing <laughs> or they'll usually dump the the leading lady for <laughs> most ridiculous yeah. like uh one last year this was for fall harvest uh was uh uh he, he had just been yeah, this was in love struck a movie called love struck cafe and this guy this actor we really like casey manderson he usually plays some version of the bad men of business and mm-hmm. he had just gotten named the uh <laughs> the was the the bachelor lawyer the top three bachelor lawyer of chicago or something like that he, was, he let the he let the power go to his head 
yes. he dumps her and uh and you know then of course there's always the uh the the, the homegrown high school boyfriend that, yeah <laughs> when she comes back that uh isn't isn't a bad man of business so yeah they he's love, just sweet and he still takes care of his mom or something right. like that and you're like oh I'll just give him a chance runs oh, the diner slash this. farm slash yeah. uh, he's a yeah. volunteer fireman right. you know something <laughs> like, like that like, like paul green usually yeah. <laughs> usually they have like five to seven jobs <laughs> yeah oh yeah. i just helped my mom out with the store and i work at the farm and I'm and <laughs> a volunteer firefighter that's right i love exactly. it exactly so oh fun. my my friend was in one last year that's super cute that's on amazon uh-huh. uh shoelaces for christmas uh-huh. it's so adorable it's yeah. just uh the story of a kind of stuck-up girl which i mean there's a there's a moment where you go mm, i don't know if she's gonna yeah. be able to make that turn she, she was a lot yeah in that movie right the whole like, like oh, uh, we kept we watched it together and i just kept teasing her and i was like oh my gosh you are ridiculous yeah. mom i know you have cancer but what about our christmas party yeah, yeah you're gonna ruin it all my friends oh uh, and it's it's so funny just because mia tapalian is the sweetest human being in the world and so the whole time you're watching that first act i would just like stare at her and be like mia why are you so horrible <laughs> yeah. But I love yeah. in that movie that like as she gets kinder, she starts mm -hmm. she like dresses more subdued and it's they true. ease it with the makeup and you see this physical transformation going down too. It just oh it it's kills true. me. But that's also, you know, I'm I'm super into it because it's my best friend and sure. I'm just laughing at, you know. No, it did playing have a, a nice high schooler. Message. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I was just like i'm so glad i don't have any teenagers right i'm so glad oh my Oof. gosh Oof. any it's teenagers good. listening don't be like that. yeah <laughs> because <laughs> it's yeah i mean woo. uh but uh, but no, don't be mad when you can't go to paris because mom has cancer like, right. that's, <laughs> anytime that's you're lot. tempted to say uh how do you why did you get cancer that's a bad line of thought yeah. Yeah, Change that's not a thought. strong opening argument. <laughs> right. As the uh, this has been the year for like really manipulative dog movies for some yes. reason. I oh don't understand goodness. why. But uh, in the uh, dog's journey, I think it was the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when one in it's the one where the dog keeps dying, coming back to life. <laughs> yeah, which is a horrible premise, and I don't know how it got a sequel. But <laughs> nevertheless. Um, and one of the lives uh the the one of the guys spoiler alert gets cancer one of the humans and and his horrible girlfriend uh who is of course not our leading person that we want him to her him to be with anyway uh she, he gets cancer and her response is uh, you know i hate hospitals <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and i was just dying laughing <laughs> what is she is he dating cruella de vil like what is going on like that's not a normal thing to say i <laughs> hate hospitals and i'm gonna make a coat out of your golden yeah. retriever that's right oh my god so funny wow <laughs> yeah not my favorite movie i'm gonna have it to be was... like mia there's a there's a villain worse than you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh but yeah <laughs> But that it it did have a it did have a very sweet message in the end so that was that was fun but uh but yeah i mean i feel like that's the thing with these movies almost always there's a few that really take me to a dark place and yeah. i and i say it um but for the most part you can find something happy to say about almost any of them they're just they're just fun they're just trying to make people happy mm -hmm. you know <laughs> they're they're a uh, you can't be too critical of something that's just there to just try to entertain you you know i don't know exactly and it's uh, it's just they're fun yeah. it's uh, i i've talked about this before on other shows uh my husband's concept of the tombstone pizza of a movie mm -hmm. you know it's not the best version of something always but it's still fun and it's yeah. still what you wanted ultimately right yeah yeah and i always try to judge something for what it it's trying to be like i'm not looking at 
uh, these movies in the same lens as I'm looking at the latest Daniel Day Lewis film, you know, like they're totally different. Uh, But, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, but so we like to end our interviews with some fun, silly questions. So, all right. I'm going to give you the holiday edition. And <laughs> so first question, what is your favorite holiday drink? Eggnog. Spiked. Right. Nice. Ooh, or, or homemade fireball whiskey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> homemade, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I do a, I do a mean fire whiskey. That sounds intense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we good. don't mess around in this house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Oh, sugar cookies or Italian wedding cookies. I love Italian wedding cookies. So good. With you. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, what is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Ooh, oh golly. I know. Um, I, I really like this is so silly. I really like the God Rest You Merry Gentlemen uh mm-hmm. song that's done by Bare Naked Ladies. Yes. <laughs> I love that yeah. one. Mm-hmm. They are a great, uh, well, I guess now they, they, they're, they're not the same as they once were, but when yeah. I saw them, uh, they were so great live. It they're was, so fun. And they've got a great the, Christmas album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really good. Um, okay. Uh, what is your favorite Christmas movie? We kind of talked a little bit about. Ooh, I think the ultimate favorite Christmas movie that I watch constantly is, I, I, I I'm going to sound like such a sellout elf elf is so Mm, good. Yeah. Also I would categorize kiss, kiss, bang, bang as a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. And that one's amazing. If y'all haven't seen it. Right. It's, it's not, not, not Hallmark friendly. It's not Uh, Hallmark friendly. That's going to be for the adults (laughs) when the kiddos are in bed. Right. Very good. Yes. (laughs) And you you know, elf, I know a lot of people are kind of mixed on Will Ferrell, but that movie has a ton of heart and yeah. uh, it's it I think it's really, really funny. I kind of feel like mm-hmm. Elf and Enchanted are basically the same movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I hundred <laughs> percent buy into that. that. Yeah. They're they're and uh, the only the only great mystery of Elf is why do they have a shower at Macy's? That's my only yeah. major question. I was concerned about that too. <laughs> yeah. So all right. What is your favorite holiday tradition to do every year? Oh, we do the Feast of Seven Fish. Uh, so that is an Italian tradition in which uh, Italians, we, we uh, fast during the holidays. But because we're Italians, it's not real fasting. It's just like, well, we won't eat red meat, I guess. <laughs> and so it's seven courses of seafood. And it's seven because of the seven sacraments. Or uh-huh. some people do 13 uh, for, for something else. <laughs> um, we do seven for the uh, sacraments. And so it's just seven courses of seafood. We usually have about 40 people that we feed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a big to do because what? most of us here in LA, it's hard for us to get back to our, our hometowns. Yeah. You know, I'm from Texas. Logan's from Nebraska. Most of our friends are Nebraskans and, uh, and it's really, really lucrative to stick around LA for the holidays since most things shut down. But when there's that random job, we're here to get it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we kind of do, uh, this, this big feast for everyone that we started calling Oliver Twistmas where, uh, you know, we feed everyone and we all have drinks and we, we play games and watch movies and it's amazing. Yeah. That sounds so fun. I love that. Yeah. It's a good time. It, it, I mean, especially Thanksgiving, it's, it's hard. My parents now live close to me, but they didn't always. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was impossible sometimes just to get home for Thanksgiving. Oh Um, Yeah. So, you know, you kind of try to do a Friendsgiving. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's fun. And so that's really cool. Great. Um, so what's a memorable Christmas gift you've either like, given or received? Ooh, golly. Okay. Given or received. Given or received. Um, I want to say something that I've given so that I sound cool and thoughtful, <laughs> but I'm blanking. So Did you have my... a Red Rider BB gun kind of moment no, as a kid? Oh, you got what my... you really wanted? My dad, so every year, because I thought I was so clever, I would do a Lucy Van Pelt Christmas letter that said, all I really want is real estate. Mm -hmm. And then I'd also add on there that I wanted a pony. Right. And was just, oh, I'm a comedic genius. I'm the funniest (laughs) five-year-old in the world. 
And so one year my dad made me a horse stable and he got me a whole bunch of plastic horses that filled the stable. And it was just Aww. the sweetest thing. That's really and, and he gave me a fake deed so that I owned the, the real estate. That's really cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of it reminds me of my my dad was pretty creative with gift giving and and uh, when I turned when I turned eighteen my my mom was actually pregnant <laughs> and uh, and so and we had like lots of little ones around the house and and mm -hmm. I was just not a place that like I wanted to be I wanted to be out on my own you know away from all these babies yeah. and kids and stuff and so I was so ready to be out of the house and. So my dad wrote me on my 18th birthday a like a, a big uh, emancipation or whatever like free, to, free to, he read it, this speech and he read it out I I hereby declare that Rachel is finally an adult and and, uh, and I was so excited that's uh, so cute yeah, yeah. I love that <laughs> yeah uh, so <laughs> it's it's fun and one of my favorite memories too of uh, uh growing up too is we all we did these cooking contests the mm -hmm. sometimes during the holidays sometimes in the summer depending on when where we would literally spend weeks coming up with our menus and and what we were going to do and then mm -hmm. uh, of course my parents could never decide who had made the best meal uh, uh -huh. but <laughs> they would they would usually give they would give us like all a small like a 30 dollar and under kind of a little appliance like a toaster or something like that uh -huh. and uh and that is definitely one of my most favorite memories is just like cooking Aww. with my with my siblings and and yeah. uh, uh just and just all the time spent coming up with the recipes and exactly and things and so it's it's really my favorite fun. way to celebrate the holidays yeah. uh, food is a love language and it's so mm -hmm. so nice when you get to do that with your family and yeah. establish traditions or carry on traditions mm -hmm. oh it's yeah. it's one of my like favorite favorite just points of the holiday yeah this is the best all right uh so which would you pick scrooge or the grinch uh the grinch and i'm a sellout and i'm gonna go jim carrey over boris karloff <laughs> oh controversy i know controversy yeah. yeah at least you didn't pick the one last year that one was that was not very good although not max was really cute in it <laughs> yeah, he was cute yeah it was not my favorite um nah. uh, okay clear lights or colored clear but you can go away you can get away with solid colors like those blue icicle lights cuz mm -hmm. i never had snow in texas so i really loved those but yeah. the the ones that are all mixed and mashed and eh, it looks like you're going to just try to keep it up all year <laughs> yeah it's it's true um okay <laughs> um so a snowball fight or or build a snowman snowball fight mm -hmm. okay good uh are you would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not i'm a very good gift wrapper and that's only because i worked at a jewelry store during college and they militantly trained me to gift wrap because okay. if someone was spending all this money on yeah. a ring or whatever it better be packaged pretty yeah. and they would oh they would send me in the back for hours and just be like redo them <laughs> you're like curl the ribbon right yes. this time. <laughs> six inches <laughs> well that's good uh, so uh, last question is mm -hmm. what is your ugliest christmas sweater i know you're there in california Ooh, now, we do have them though um i've got a nightmare before christmas one and a spider-man one mm. um but the ugliest one probably is uh a hand-me-down from logan's family that's just this puffy like dark green it's not even a christmasy green it's just a weird dark green um, that has an Iron Man, uh, Iron Dawn snowman on it with a bunch of Iron Dawn snowflakes. And it still says ho, ho, ho on it, even though there's no Santa and, and then says, let it snow on it. Um, and it just, it looks like someone just ran to a craft store and was like, oh no, the kids have to wear sweaters today. Ah, <laughs> I love it. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I think you need to add that to your merch store immediately. Oh, 100%. <laughs> That sounds great. Well, <laughs> this has been really fun. I really appreciate you coming on and uh, talking with us. I had a blast. And Thank you so much. <laughs> so how can people follow you on your various content and in your social media and all that fun stuff? 
You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at actor Chris Carr. That's K-R-I-S-C-A-R-R, like the crackers that you're going to have at your Christmas parties. Uh, or you can watch me on YouTube on either the John Campia show, Tuesdays, or Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I started saying this random schedule because of Aaron booking stuff this week. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and th Thursdays. Or you can watch me on uh, Nerdwire, where I do essays on things like Avatar, Steven Universe, and coming soon, lots of Christmas stuff. Yay! Oh my gosh. Well, if there's anything we can do to help you in that, in that uh, area, just oh, let us yeah. know. Let us Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, this has been great. I, I'm, I'm thrilled. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, and let us know if you're listening, if you have any questions or comments about the things we talked about, we would love to hear in the comment section or on Twitter. Let's talk it out. It would be super fun. And thanks again. And it will definitely have to have you on again. Yes, please. This was amazing. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. I'd like to thank Chris for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun and make sure you guys are following all her content. She's a delight. And uh, you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of her social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So make sure to check that out and make sure you're following the podcast at Home Keys Pod, all of her social media and on iTunes and YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, please give us your ratings and reviews. If you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We sure appreciate that. And consider becoming a patron to the podcast. We so appreciate our patrons and they help us to be able to do more interviews and have more great content. And we have giveaways and all kinds of exclusives for the patrons. That's so much fun. So thanks so much again to Chris. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Bye. This podcast was brought to you by Hallmarkies for Hallmarkies. For more information about how you can leave your mark on Hallmarkies, visit hallmarkiespodcast.com. Link in the description.